All right, so today should be a fun one. Last time we kind of did a um, kind of a uh, more of a, an abstract kind of psychological one. This one is going to kind of get back into some technical stuff. I want to talk about, um, really want to talk a lot about entries. Um, today, entries, uh, average position building, all of that, all of that good stuff. Um, you know, just the nitty gritty of, you know, executing a trade, you know, as um, as some people would make jokes about execution, right? So we're going to talk about execution today. Um, but yeah, specifically on average building, position building, and entries. Last week, we were we were like here, right? Uh, and I said that this was a nice 410 dip hold, but the dip could go lower because this is kind of a baby little dip, right? You see this big move up from 360, no dips, and then it dips at, and holds 410. It's a little high. So I thought it could go lower, maybe 405 to 400. Uh, and if it got sub 400, I would actually think that would be a little bearish, right? And you could just, you, it, it doesn't like, it's not like there's no scientific way to gauge if it's bearish or not but like you just kind of I, I mean the the what i've said a long time ago about like a you know how far down a bounce should go you just put like 50 percent of the way and it should hold right so you get 370 here kind of where this move starts 370 to 430 it should hold 400 right that's the halfway mark if it can hold 400 that's a kind of a healthy hold uh if if it got sub 400 you know it, it kind of tends to get a little bearish because it kind of just means now there's like enough people that bought late that are now underwater you know a lot of people are kind of unhappy about it so um i do think that we're you know uh that this 410 dip was a little high I, i'm glad that we dipped further but you know we got a little slippery we saw a little bit of emotion under 400 um which i think is a little normal normal right it's just you know whoa we're under 400 um i think it was kind of good that the market kind of rebounded today uh, but um i i I I, honest, I just don't think the market's going anywhere. Um, tech on a technical basis, there's nothing here that says, you know, market's going to go see highs or that we're going to go fail. And holiday weeks have a have a way of kind of shifting stuff, right? Like like the July Fourth uh, holiday kind of turns summer on. Um, you know, New Year's Day kicks you know kicks the the January momentum normally, right? You know, holidays have a have a kind of a way of just getting people you know changing the tone a little bit uh range is kind of you know subsiding slowly by slowly and like i say like like i said last webinar right um market sentiment kind of you know range kind of contracts and explodes like breakout stocks right a stock breaks out you know then it has its high volatility and the volumes then the range starts to contract 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 and then it and then it spikes again that's just that's just kind of the way market sentiment works and how how uh, ranges in the market, we get this flurry of range in the market. And, you know, if you're a short seller, that's when you have to be really careful. That's when longs can step on the gas a little bit. Um, and when the range tightens, that's when shorts can kind of get a little bit more aggressive because stuff starts being more range bound, less continuation on the moves. Um, and that's, you know, where shorts can kind of make their, their money. You know, and one thing I've noticed that we don't really have a lot of anymore we don't really have a whole lot of strong day twos. Um, like, like what I mean by that is like, look at, look at this move, for example, on nerve, you see a big strong move here the next day, not that strong. Then you have another day here, the next day, not that strong. Then you have another strong day here, the next day, not that strong. You know, we're, we're, we're getting these. Um, and by here, it's not day two anymore, but like, you know, there used to be a time you know, when, when stocks had momentum, when stocks had true momentum to them, you, you know, you would get a candle like, you know, like this on day one and it would gap up, you know, sell off in the morning, um, you know, a little bit test support, support would hold and it would go for another run on day two. Uh, and that's how you know that we're in a momentum market is because um, people saw that there was a stock that ran that one day, They're like, oh, it's going to run again. Why? Because it ran on the first day. And that's when you know that the, when you start getting strong day twos, that's when you know that um, we're really in a momentum based market. And I'm, I'm, and I'm trying to talk about that now because I do think it's coming right. Normally at the end of the year, stocks start to get like this. And um, so I'm just kind of, mentally preparing for it. Like when you start to see some, some stocks 
hold up on day two. The reason why this tends to happen is because when when you get a couple days strong day two stocks, shorts are no longer comfortable holding overnight. Different entries for different trades, right? So like I said, we're talking about entries and average on here. And so this is, um, I think a lot of people are going to get a lot of benefit out of this one. So um, every trade is going to be different, right? There are different setups that require different entries, obviously. But for some trades, I even have this written on my phone. Um, but for some trades, the best entry is also too dangerous to enter, at least entering in full. But it's the best entry. And that's, that's, that's the real kicker to, to, to trading small cap stocks. Um, you're going to get the best entry where all the emotion is. And um, I don't trade uh, this large. Um, and honestly, I don't think I ever will because it just, it just doesn't seem that appealing to me. But I, I know some traders that trade really big where liquidity is kind of a problem for them. But for everyone, it's often too dangerous to go full in that position because you can easily get killed there. And so you're going to see this in a lot of situations. Like take a breakout, for example. Breakouts are not always clean. Sometimes they're clean. And sometimes the cleanest ones are the most frustrating because you don't get size, right? Um, uh, sometimes as a trader, you're kind of expecting a little kind of bullshit action on whatever trade you're going to take. And there's no bullshit. And and you're sitting there with 100 shares and you're like, dude, like I expected it to be a pain in the ass and I was going to size in slowly. And I put my order out there at 350 and it filled me and it fit down. I'm like, dude, but I wanted some size on the position. And I just, I got my first starter and you're just like, do I just go bigger next time? And then you go bigger next time and it just blows you through the water. Right. And so you kind of learn that one of those is acceptable. It's, it's acceptable to be too small for a winner. And one of those isn't too acceptable to be full size and get blown, blown to bits. Right. And so unfortunately we, you know, as a trader, you have to take the less greedy option. And so um, what I like to do is um, build into the position mediumly. I don't like to build too slow. I like to be, I like to be somewhat aggressive um, with my entry, but I don't, um, you know, I won't, I won't um, go too aggressive and it's, it's a balance you're going to have to find, but take breakouts, for example, like I, on a breakout trade, I'm putting at least 30%. I, I put about 30 to 50% of my, my trade on at the entry. And I do this for a couple of different reasons. Um, one, because it's easier to double than it is to, it's, it's, it, it's easier to double or double twice. Like if you put on a third and you double twice, you get into full, right? Um, uh, and, or if you go in half, you only have to double once. You know, somewhere around there, I can just kind of double a couple of times and get in on a breakout. 